Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 1769, okay? So it says that 20 kilogram roll paper has a radius of duration k of sub a equal to 90 millimeters about an axis passing through point a. It is pin supported at both ends by two brackets a b. If the roll tests rests against a wall for which the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu of k equal to 0 0.2 and a vertical force f equal to 30 newtons is applied to the end of the paper determine the angular acceleration of the wall as the paper unrolls okay so as we have in here we got our paper there is roll we're pulling a force in here however we are attached by these uh, points a and b and the last thing we have to know is also that we have a wall in here that is going to be applying a normal force and a frictional force regarding to this mu of k. Okay, so we're asked to find the angular acceleration, and we're going to do that by maybe doing some summatorial moment, but we will see. So the first thing I'd like to do, like in any other problems, let's write out our givens. The first thing that they give to us is that our mass is 20 kilograms then we're giving our radius of duration case of a of 90 millimeters i'm going to convert this into meters because these are the most standard units meters so we got 0 0.09 meters we're also giving mu of k our uh, coefficient of friction 0.2 and lastly, we have our force F equal to 30 newtons. All right. So like always, since we it's in statics, the next step will be to do a free body diagram. So let's go ahead and do a free body diagram. We have our free body diagram of our roll. So we have something like this with our point a right here in the middle so what forces do we have well the first force i can see is our tension that i'm going to call tension a b we also have the normal force at my point c so we got my normal point at c we also have a frictional force well if we're trying to force this in this direction we're going to have an acceleration in this direction Therefore, our friction is going to be opposite, so like this. And my wall, F, is going to be like this, right? So our frictional force is going to come down like this. So we got a frictional force at C. We will also have the force F going down, which we already know that is equal to 30 newtons. And lastly, we're going to have the weight of this roll. And the weight is the mass times the acceleration of gravity, okay? So I believe those are all our forces. Now, most of them are purely horizontal or vertical, right? So I'm talking about all of this, except our tension in B. So let's give a direction that with respect to the x-axis. So and we're gonna call that angle theta. So let's figure out what that angle theta. Well, we have our opposite and we have our adjacent, right? So we can have a right triangle like this and we're gonna find that angle theta. So for that angle theta, we're going to do the inverse So let's do our inverse of tangent, which is tangent is opposite, so 300, divided by my adjacent, 125. And if we plug this into our calculator, we're going to get a total of 67.30A degrees. Okay, so since we uh, we have our directions, we have everything, what we can do as well. If we want to find the angular acceleration, the first formula that comes into mind is the summatory of moments around my center of gravity for my object. 
So if we do a sumatory of moments around A, this should be equal to my moment of inertia multiplied by my angular acceleration. And this is the guy that uh, we want to solve for, right? So let's try to do this by doing, assuming that going counterclockwise is positive. And if we do this sumatory of moments, well, let's see what we have. Well, our tension AB passes to my point A similarly with our weight and similarly with my normal at C. So neither of these three forces do a moment above my point A. So we only have the frictional force and our Teddy Newtons. So what we're going to have is my frictional force, which is 0 0.2 multiplied by NC. And let's just do a side, like remember, our frictional force is always going to be the mu of k times our normal force at that point, which in this case is normal at c. So the 0 0.2 comes from my mu of k and my normal at c. And we're going to multiply this frictional force by the distance. So what is the distance from here, this line of action to my point A? Well, it's our 125 millimeters. We're going to convert it into meters. So we got 0.125 meters. The direction is counterclockwise, so it's positive. Then we're going to have minus because this Teddy Newtons is going to create me a clockwise direction. So negative Teddy Newtons multiplied by the same distance, so 0.125. Um, and all of this has to be equal to my moment of inertia. Now, how can we do this moment of inertia? Well, Let's remember that our moment of inertia, so another side, remember, in here, is that our moment of inertia is equal to our mass times our radius of duration. And since we're given these numbers, we're going to have that, uh, we're going to be able to plug them in. So we have the mass, which is 20 kilograms, so we multiply by 20, multiplies by our radius of duration, 0 0.09, and I actually forgot that this should be a square. So be careful with that, guys. The formula is a square, therefore we are missing a square in here. And we're multiplying this by our acceleration. So we have our guy that we want to find. However, we have another variable that we don't know. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and do a summatory of forces in the x direction. We're going to assume that we're going right is positive and this should be equal to my mass times my acceleration in the x direction now are we moving in the x direction at all in this problem we're not therefore this acceleration will always be equal to zero what forces do we have in the horizontal component well we have our normal at c going to the right which is positive so we got nc and we have the negative component on the x direction of our tension ab so we got minus tension ab multiplied by the cosine of our angle theta which is 67.30a and this should be equal to zero now we found the same variable nc however we have another one so we have three unknowns and only two equations so we're gonna go ahead and do another summatory of forces in the y direction we're going to assume that going up is positive and similarly with our summatory of forces in the x direction this is going to be equal to zero because we're not moving neither up or down right what forces do we have going in the vertical component, in the vertical axis? So we have the frictional force, the weight, our Teddy Newtons all going down, and the positive tension AB. So we got our tension AB multiplied by the sine of 67.30A minus our frictional force, 0 0.2 NC. Then we're going to have minus the weight, which we're told 20 kilograms times 9.81. Remember the mass times gravity minus our Teddy Newtons. And all this should be equal to zero. So now we have the same two unknowns as my, my previous equation. So what we have in here is two unknowns with two equations. So 
what we can do is solve for this. What I like to do is solve by matrices. So I'm going to arrange them like this. So we got one and C minus um, T, uh, the tension AB cosine of 67.38. And that got to be equal to zero. So what I'm doing is ordering first NC and then TAB. And then finally at the end, I'm putting uh, all my remainder numbers, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing with our second equation. So we got negative 0.2 NC plus TAB sine of 67.38. And this has to be equal to the addition of these two. So these two are negative. If we add them up and then we move them to the other side, we'll become positive. And so how much would that be the addition of those two? Those two are equal to 226.2, okay? So I'm going to solve these two equations using matrices. You guys can use whichever method you prefer. So I'm gonna plug them into, into my calculator. So NC and TAB, both of this, so the normal C will give me a total of 102.82 Newtons. And my tension at AB is going to be equal to 267.33 Newtons. Okay, so now that we have this NC, we can go ahead and plug it into our first equation in here. Okay, so you guys know what we are doing. So I'm actually gonna do this so we know. Okay, so we start with 0 0.2 multiplied by NC. Well, we have NC is equal to 102.82. We're going to multiply by 0 0.125. And we're going to subtract 30 times 0 0.125. And this is equal to our moment of inertia times our acceleration. So what I'm going to do is pass this entire thing to divide on the other side so let's do it over here so we are going to divide all of this by 20 times 0 0.09 squared and all of this should be equal to my acceleration okay so we have that our acceleration is going to be equal to so we're going to plug this into our calculator and see how much we get we get a total of negative 7.28 and this should be units in radius per radians, I'm sorry, per second square. Now, we can see that we got a negative angular acceleration. Why is that? Well, that is because we are initially assuming and going counterclockwise is positive. But as we can see, we use a little bit of common sense. We're actually going clockwise. So it makes sense that we're going in that direction, in the negative direction. Or we can just say that our angular acceleration is equal to 7.28 radians per second square in the clockwise direction. So now we know which direction. And just like that, we figured out our answer for this problem. So I hope you guys like this video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.